Hi everyone. Um, this is Chen Peng um, in San Diego. Uh, I I'm very glad to take this opportunity to give you a brief introduction of our new MLOVA structure legislation for Innova structure determination using 1D and 2D NMR. Yeah, so my plan is to uh, first, you, uh, first of all give you a very brief introduction of the uh, history of computer assisted structure station. Then I will um, show you uh, a little bit about uh, our design, uh, uh, why we have this new one uh, in our system. And then I will first do the demo uh, of the, uh, the new plugin using uh, two data sets. And yeah, that will be followed by the question uh, session. Yeah, please, as Enrique just said, just uh, type your questions uh, in the question uh, session uh, so I can answer to those. Right, so computer assisted structure illustration or case actually has a long history. Uh, it's one of the major pioneering efforts in artificial intelligence, starting uh, in 1960s. Yeah, at that time, people were using MassSpec IR, which was available then, and later uh, they used one the NMR. Uh, the major ones, yeah, of course, at that time, people did not realize <laughs> it took more than half a century to have something like AlphaGo. Yeah, at that time, people would talk about chess, of course. Right, so the famous ones uh, included uh, Danger, which was a project in Stanford University, uh, Chemis, Chemix in Japan, Dark in France, uh, and Sesame in Arizona State University, and uh, several others, the most using uh, MassTech IR and the one DNA. And uh, when 2D NMR spectroscopic technique became available in the early 1980s, uh, it was quickly adopted by Sesame, for example, and many other new ones uh, like LSD, SASOSS, uh, which uh, was my mainly my uh, PhD work, um, and Lucy, uh, Cocon, Struck, Luke. Etc. Etc. Yeah, many of them are available online these days. Um, the approaches, the methods of most of them are quite similar. Yeah, here I just want to take uh, an old picture from my uh, what I did then uh, as an explanation. Yeah, so you can see usually these kind of auctions start with the molecular formula and uh, using the multiplicities. Uh, Multiplicity structures, protons, integrals, and the multiplicity from the carbon 13, CH, CH2, CH3, etc., to get the building blocks and also determine whether there's molecular symmetry. And then using the 2D spectra, like H HMQC, where you have direct connectivity between the proton and the carbon, uh, and from DKF Cosy, you got the two, two, three, five. Two to five bonds, correlation between protons, and HMBC, you get two or three bond correlation between uh, proton and carbons, and of course, if you have any adequate, you, can, you get a carbon to carbon single bond connectivities, and all those connectivities are converted to uh, connectivities between carbon to carbon using this HMQC direct connectivities. And the foreign task, which is also the, the, the critical one, is to uh, convert all of those information we have uh, and use the structure generator to combine all those information into possible structure candidates. And you should do that, that process, you got the pixel sign as well. Yeah, so they're all quite similar in terms of uh, process in terms of the methods. Of course, there are some, uh, a lot of differences in terms of implementation and the details. Right, so 
I would say just like many application artificial intelligence, case is also an area full of hope and hype. I say so I saw even in the early as early as nineteen ninety six, there was a claim that the dream of spatial copyist came true using just one decarbon thirteen stage. And of course there was a uh, argument uh, against that, as you can see here. I started learning English around that time, and I was very fascinated by those uh, adjectives like that. But anyway, uh, right. So in uh, in 1990s, we uh, began to see commercial programs of case. Yeah, I was very happy to. Uh, because I, I participated in the first, the very first commercial program, Enema Sams, which was uh, actually uh, originated from my PhD work, Science of the Sets. you could see, uh, we had some something like that. Enema Sams means a uh, spectrum assignment uh, uh, made simple. And uh, a few years later, uh, we, we saw uh, ACD structured data, uh, which was from Struck Luke. And in the recent years, uh, Top Spin, CMC SE uh, uh, is also available. Uh, I think uh, at the beginning was from LSD. Um, and recently, we just released MLOVA structured station. Uh, that's uh, original from uh, Cocoon. Which I'm going to detail a little bit later. Right. So anyway, I participated in the first one, and I had some quite a, a lot of experience I learned from that process. Uh, and, uh, first of all, interface is very important. Uh, if you have a separate, you, you, if you have to use a separate program to process the data and the get tables, ask get tables of the restraints and enter it into a structure generator, then I don't think many people will uh, use it. And also the whole workflow has to be uh, really uh, smooth, uh, seamless, streamlined. Yeah, all those things, that's what I learned from, from that, that, th those years. So um, why do we need another one in this MLOVA platform, not a structure you use later? Okay. Apparently, a lot, a lot of people are not satisfied with the current, currently available ones. Okay, and also MLOVA, by far, is the most widely used NMR processing and analysis software for small molecular NMR. Um, MLOVA has database search for known structure identification. It has structure verification for uh, possible structure uh, for verif verification of possible structures. And it has 3D structure determination plugins like MSPIN and the Steel Feeder. So, the Nova structure station is just a single missing block in this big picture. Uh, and that's why I would say MNOVA provides the best environment for structure utilization, structure generation engine. Right. So, uh, starting about two years ago, we started this collaboration um, with uh, Dr. Matthias uh, Cook, uh, who's the um, uh, one of the uh, Cochrane uh, team members. Yeah, they provide us the uh, source code, and uh, the development, you know, and uh, was done uh, has been done by Dr. Curia Blinov. Yeah, he has his own company in uh, on the west coast, uh, Oregon, um, and uh, um, of course, this MLOVA platform uh, has been uh, developed and uh, constantly improved by our master of research uh, development team, and it's released with this brand new MLOVA version twelve uh, just a few months ago. And you, 
if you open M Nova 12, you will see this brand new ribbon control and you will see a uh, new station there with those uh, tools like that, uh, if you have the license. Right, so uh, with that, uh, next I'm going to uh, show you how this uh, M Nova structure new station works. Um, I'm going to show you two uh, examples limited by the time. Um, yeah, I, I must focus on the first one, although it's a small molecule, uh, ibuprofen. Um, it has also some challenges like very close peaks um, and uh, molecular symmetry, etc. So I'll use this to show you the uh, general workflow. Okay. And then I will also show you a, a more complex example. Uh, you can bin it has a small form like that and this available spectra there, etc. Right, so um, now I will switch, switch to MLOVA, uh, this is the version 12. Right, uh, this is the uh, ribbon um, control, which is new in this version. And uh, of course, if you want to switch back, uh, it's also possible. Uh, there is a classic uh, option. Uh, right, so um, we, I'll use this data browser to switch to where my data is. Yeah, typically, you will first open your data. Uh, here I have all those uh, five spectra, proton carbon, CoC, agent BC, and QC uh, here as, uh, as the raw data. And then we'll just drag them to NOVA and get them uh, open and uh, automatic processed. But this proton looks fine to me. And this is the carbon which seems to be okay as well. And uh, I have this HSQC. Um, yeah, apparently the line shape is not that good. So yeah, here you will see those highlighted ones are the ones that you might use uh, with the current data here. So I click the processing. You will see those uh, general use tools for processing. Uh, I will take a look and I will change the epitization to something like that, which I think is more uh, is better. And I change this epitization to sine square 90 degree as well. And looking at here, uh, it's 256 uh, points. And yeah, 1K seems to be okay, or just 128. So I might want to do just like a forward uh, in a prediction to increase the resolution in the second dimension. Yeah, so click that, I definitely see a much better uh, peak shapes, as you can see. Right, and this uh, proper processing, processing is very important because uh, in a situation like this, yeah, you will see uh, you have to have relative good res resolution in the second dimension to distinguish which crystal to which here. Of course, we have an alignment problem here. Uh, that's apparent due to the uh, uh, shift reference, which I'm going to show you how to uh, fix that as well soon. And this is the cosy. Um, apparently, we also need to touch up a little bit. This dimension is okay. Dimension, maybe, uh, yeah, the number of uh, data points in this dimension seems to be quite small, so I will do some something similar. Your leading prediction forward, and definitely, I get a much better uh, process spectrum, right? So, uh 
last one is station BC. Yeah, I will also reprocess a little bit. This dimension is okay, not a dimension. Okay, very nice. Um, so now comes to chemical shift reference in this analysis. Uh, uh, ribbon, you see the first one is for chemical shift referencing. Right. So I will uh, make sure here this one is zero. Right. And for the other ones, I will just use this very handy tool, uh, absolute reference. I'm leaving everything checked except the first one, proton, which I'm going to use as the standard. And I click OK, then yeah, all other spectra will be um, referenced, properly referenced. As you can see here, right? If you look at the HSQC, now I think it is practical, it's possible to tell that uh, yeah, this one is create to this one and the other one is, is here. Right, so just showing you that this whole workflow, this whole process includes the uh, spectral uh, processing, which is uh, very, uh, uh, makes the uh, strategy station uh, have a good starting point. <coughs> right, so next, uh, if we go to the CDU station uh, ribbon, you will see uh, the tools arranged in the uh, uh, natural order that we're going to use it. Uh, we can click this dot structure this station, uh, then you will see this loop station workflow. And you, you could just simply follow those uh, instructions there to, to, to process, uh, to start the, the process. So now I'm going to enter this molecular formula, which is C13. H, King, OQ. Right, it is okay if you enter a wrong one, because you can always change that. Now, once you do that, you will get, uh, you will see in this molecular connectivity diagram, you see those study blocks, the building blocks. Right, so next I will, uh, um, go to carbon 13 and uh, click this one to do automatic pick picking. Yeah. You did that and you also recognize the DMSO fix, uh, which is fine. And during that process, uh, you will see that the uh, many of those carbons already have an assigned chemical shift from here. And some don't because we have extra ones, right? Which might be due to uh, the quaternary carbons or uh, symmetric carbons, right? So here we have to make sure every carbon is properly picked, and there's no uh, uh, noise. Here, apparently, we pick the noise there, so I will uh, delete that one. I think you can use that one to click that again. No. So I go to the analysis. There is a right. on. Now, if you look here, uh, we can do proton. Analysis. Right. So I can click here. Yeah, I got those multi points done. And the integration, the integrals are also automatically normalized, yeah, which are very important for us to distinguish uh, CH3, CH2, CH, right, etc. Right. And uh, next, we will look at this HSQC. 
So if you get back to the illustration, yeah, or we'll just click uh, here, I just QC. Yeah. From here, uh, you will see this very important pick picking hint lines. If you click that, it will show you the one the pick uh, uh, centers. Uh, and those grid lines are very useful for you to uh, ignore artifacts and pick the right picks. Right. So either clicking here or just use that tool there, you can just click close to those intersections of the grid lines and uh, struct, the low structure session will uh, get those uh, building blocks like CH, CH2, CH3, etc. Right. Now you will see the protons time shifts also assigned to uh, many of those building blocks. So at this point, we will figure out why we have those three extra carbons without uh, chemical shifts, right? So if we look at the uh, integration integrals of those two peaks around the seven, and you look around the here, uh, the HSQC, yeah, you will see uh, they are CHs because the, the color uh, of the edit uh, protons. So we have to uh, manually, we know that they're symmetric as well as this one here, which is uh, like a methyl group, but it's, it's two uh, because it has integral of around six. Right. So with that information, we, we can manually uh, enter the symmetry, symmetry information in this uh, in this table. We call it illustration constraints. Right. So here, this illustration constraints, if it's not there, you, you can uh, show it from using this uh, tool there. Uh, it, it will sh can show you the individual, uh, the connectivities for individual spectra, or this combined data. Right. So in this combined data here, we know those uh, CH groups from around the 7.1, uh, uh, the asymmetric. So I enter two here. Here as well. Let me show it's the uh, two uh, symmetric uh, partners there. And uh, so is the one uh, around uh, here, the two mesh groups. So that's uh, this one, 1.5. So, yeah, in if you have a more complex uh, structure, then yeah, it's very important to look around the here to make sure the hybrid the st status of those uh, building blocks are correct. You can always manually uh, resolve uh, some ambiguities or correct errors from here. Right, so now if we look back at this micro connected diagram, you see every carbon has uh, assigned a chemical shift or chemical shifts. Right, so next we will look at the um, uh, Cauchy spectrum. Right, uh, again, we can show the peak picking in lines and we will, we will only focus on those uh, of uh, diagonal peaks like this, which is usually correspond two or three proton to proton bonds. Right, so I will. Uh, commit here and uh, pick that peak. And as you do that, you will see there's something like uh, a direct connectivity between two automatic uh, state groups uh, already formed there. Right. And I uh, will use this zoom in uh, tool to pick the other ones. So this one, and that one, and that one as well. Right, so you see more uh, bonds from there. Um, right, remember, this tool can also be used to, to unselect the peak. So if you click again, yeah, you will get the uh, toggle, that, that, that peak on or off. 
now um, we will look at the HM uh, EC. Right. There are usually there are way more peaks because we have two or three bond connectivities between proton and the carbons. Um, here we have to be a little bit careful because HMBC can also show, um, sometimes can also show longer range uh, connectivities, which at this stage uh, in lower uh, stock new station cannot use it. Right? So if you have something longer range, you, you, can, you have to either manually tell it's more than three bonds or you just discard it. So in practice, if I'm not sure if it's a weak, uh, then I would just uh, simply ignore it. But there's a lot of redundancies in, in the HMPC uh, connectivities. Right. So now I will uh, do things like that. And I can use this for view to zoom into other regions. Um, also, one thing, uh, let's, let's Let's show around here. Yeah, I think that was right. So one is a little up, one is a little bit down. And you see here. And coming back to uh, this spectrum, uh, that's around 44. But we also have to be really careful around here. Yeah, if we're not sure, then we probably ignore those. If we are sure, then we can like pick this one and that one. Okay. Um, those ones, since they were resolved, so it's much easier to do those things. Right. Uh, usually, uh, I have to be a little bit careful about a weaker peak like that. Um, in this case, it's okay because that peak uh, is uh, it's slower than the other ones. So, yeah. So, if we want to try it now, we can just do a structure uh, generation here. Yeah, it's generate structures. Uh, you have choices like one uh, one level structure is generated. You can clean up, to clean up the display, uh, or you can also choose to store incomplete structures in case you don't get any complete structures during this structure region. Right. So, so we will get one uh, structure generated. All right. This is very fast uh, for this because it's a quite small structure anyway. Now you can look at the. Uh, the generate structure table. All right, you will see here uh, the structure is displayed, and also there is a carbon thirteen uh, deviation. That's the average uh, deviation between the predicted uh, carbon thirteen spectrum and the observed chemistries. Uh, uh, right. Um, if you are happy with it, then you can just. Uh, this copy the generated structure to this envelope document and uh, also in the compound table which we you usually use the compound table to see the peak assignments right um, so now you can turn over the peak uh, picking hints uh, but just to show the assignments right. and there is always these tools are always handy for you to, to see the, the connectivities. Um, right. If we display the best one, yeah, you can see here those connectivities are, if you highlight any of those, you will see also the highlight in the spectrum. Which is very handy for you to uh, to, to, to verify the generated results, especially when you have quite a few to, to choose from. Uh, 
and in this table, of course, you can also uh, set up to uh, you, you can choose from here to show the errors. Yeah, let's see another from that. So uh, anyway, um, so starting from the um, spectra processing to the building blocks and to the uh, assignment of the chemistry shifts, then to the generation of the structures and uh, picking the uh, the proper structure and importing to MLOVA and then show the assignments. Um, I hope you get an idea about this whole workflow. Yeah, typically you would go back and forth. For example, if you don't get a structure, and then you might want to look at those uh, the the peak peak results here, and especially this um, the H B C, which is quite easily uh, for people to pick the wrong peaks, especially when peaks are crowded. In that case, yeah, I would remove some. Uh, uh, Weak peaks, which I'm not sure, or remove some peaks that's showing uh, uh, peak overlap, um, and this, and start the strong generation again. Uh, in this case, for example, if I if I'm not, for example, here, those two peaks have two uh, corresponding to very close uh, common third inspection. If I happen to Pick the pick in this way instead of that one, which seems to be a quite common error. If I did like that, then if I uh, start the structure generation uh, from there, then you won't get any structures. Right. So in this case, uh, yeah, you might want to look around uh, the peaks and uh, maybe just ignore those two peaks. Just turn off that. If I cannot resolve it reliably, then I do the structure generation again. Yeah. So usually you might also get the structure or many more structures. For example, if you get get rid of uh, more of those peaks. So you still get one structure, yeah, in this for this simple case. But in more complex structures uh, situation, yeah, you might get more uh, candidates, and then you might want to add some more uh, HBC peaks, depending on uh, how well resolved they are, how how you can resolve them. Right. So I would say this is like a back and forth try and error process uh, to uh, in the real world uh, structure usage cases. Um, I hope this gives an idea. The next, I will just show you quickly, since time is limited. Uh, the some another uh, case. Uh, once this is done, I can save it. Uh, save as whatever name I like to put it there, and then everything will be there. Then I will just close it. Right. So next, I will uh, go to. The browser, open another one. Yeah, this one's uh, Yohim Bin. Uh, apparently, it is much more uh, complicated, um, and uh, I just want to show you quickly the results that we can get. Yeah, uh, I did a uh, multiple analysis and get the normalized big integrals, which are very important for another stage uh, discrimination between those uh, hybridization um, uh, hybridization uh, status of the building blocks. Carbon thirty peaks are picked. Uh, here is uh, cozy. Yeah, the offline, uh, the off uh, diagonal peaks are also picked. Some ones which are not so uh, dependable. Uh, I just didn't notice. For example, this one. 
and uh, of course in this agent uh, QC uh, HSQC spectrum yeah all those peaks are resolved uh, I try my best to, to do that and uh, sometimes I refer to the integrals here to make sure the uh, number of protons attached to each carbon is correct and all of that is uh, reflected in in the build box here and in this station constraints table right. and here if you go see the combined data you will see those uh, groups there and there's one proton here can see this proton around 7.8 ppm. Yeah, it does not have any uh, uh, peaks in the HSQC, so I assume it's from uh, uh, a hydroatom uh, NH. I could either do a, a proton hydrogen, uh, nitrogen uh, HSQC or I can just uh, manually assign it to, uh, to uh, N NH as I did here. Right, so see it's actually manual assigned here. Which is here. So with that proton, yeah this uh, proton can, uh, nitrogen can be shared or I've just given it based on my experience. But I could do this um, because I don't have it in, in this case. Right. So but it doesn't matter. Because we're not using that camera shift uh, very much during the start generation. So what's important is this assigned proton uh, camera shift 7.078, uh, uh, oh, and from it we got a lot of uh, H and BC connectivities to the neighboring protons around there. Uh, number of carbons, right. and peak picking in this H and BC is a little bit. Uh, tedious and they also uh, need a lot of uh, caution uh, for example uh, right, if you look around peaks around here I didn't want to keep those because it's very hard to tell which is which and instead of uh, getting a potential run connectivity I'd rather ignore those so anyway, with those connectivity information combined, uh, I run the structure uh, generation, and in about 10 minutes, I got the single correct structure. And then I can uh, definitely, just as you showed, I can uh, report it back to here and look at assignment and uh, the verified menu. If, if you don't see the assignment, then double click and then make sure the assignment labels and lines are displayed. Yeah, by default, it should automatically display that once you turn off the GPU hidden lines. Right. So now this, again, can help you resolve some of those ambiguities there. And at least you can manually verify that there is uh, this one connectivity that you expect from those peaks, which are overlapping. So yeah, I think time is uh, about uh, yeah, use of, of time. Um, now let me get back to my uh, slides. Right. So from demo, I hope you uh, uh, agree with my uh, summary here. Uh, I would say MLOVA structure station. Uh, it's a uh, uh, powerful. Yeah, it's it's useful to one now because it has a powerful yet easy to use processing and analysis tools supporting it, which is very important as I showed you. Uh, use those tools, it's very easy to reprocess spectra very well. Uh, the ver absolute referencing uh, function is very handy to align the spectra. And the peak picking guided by this one degrees uh, can help you avoid uh, peak noise artifacts, which is very important. And uh, this very intuitive new station workflow uh, give you a step-by-step -step guidance uh, through the whole structure decision process. Um, 
you can easily go back and forth to correct peak picking errors if you don't get a structure or if you don't get the right structure. And uh, yeah, so this process is good for our new users and also important uh, useful for experienced users as well. Right, so with that, I want to thank the uh, COCOM team uh, uh, with those three gentlemen uh, uh, in this picture. And uh, uh, Dr. Korea Berlindos, who uh, is the one, one who behind this uh, uh, new plugin. And of course, our wonderful, uh, brilliant uh, development team in MSJ Lab Research. Um, finally, uh, before I thank you, I want to uh, encourage you to go to your website and uh, download the latest version, version 12, and uh, do 45 day free trial. And don't forget, before the end of this year, we still have this uh, special promotion for this product of the month. Uh, you will get 8% off if you're academic user, and 25% off if you're industrial. Uh, now, um, thank you very much. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, you can type into question uh, dialog, and I will, I will check if I have any questions there.